Oh, hi. Hello again. Uh, it's been a long time since last recording. Uh, in the meantime, I've updated to Windows 8 and, in fact, the French version. So one thing that we are doing now is uh, allowing you to uh, indicate under the settings what uh, type of uh, uh, delimiter you use, right there on the, the GUI, to indicate whether you're using period or comma as a separator for numeric data. Right, so comma instead of uh, period. And that's uh, typically what you would use if you are on the French version or German version or most of the European versions where the decimal values, numbers, are entered with a comma rather than a period. And so when you use that, <coughs> you will be able to uh, use uh, some of the tools such as, uh, s uh, let's see, what is it there, the particles. And um, let's pin this down and uh, enable those particles. And then, you know, you have some numbers. Some of them uh, are uh, floating point numbers, uh, such as this one here, the gravity. And uh, it will process those just fine. <coughs> so <coughs> you can do all sorts of funky stuff with that again. Um, you could, for instance, go with uh, Joshua Tree and then also enable the particle or rather the horizontal and vertical mirror. There you go. And do all sorts of funky stuff with that. Let's see, for instance, the Fandango. There you go. And let's do one more. Let's see some genie effect. There you go. <coughs> it's um, something that uh, will work a little bit better that way. And also, of course, if you are using the um, the ray tracer, Puppy Ray. Right, so with Puppy Ray, you can now see there is a little preview window, and you can uh, either go directly here in the interface and uh, choose some of the other settings, such as the, uh, the sky, change the angle, see the sky right there, change the elevation of the terrain. Right, you can have it very high spiky move it around. Here you're moving not the camera, you're moving the terrain. <coughs> and you can uh, also move the camera. There it is. In a couple of different ways. So, uh, and then, you know, render, a, uh, do a ray tracing on that. I still have the mirroring enabled, so that of course gives us other funky stuff to explore. Let's go without mirror. Let's go and undo. In fact, let's go and generate the more typical way to do this, which is the plasma noise, something like that. And perhaps go and uh, adjust, shall we say, the curves. There you go. Let's do a couple of plateaus. So we have a flat, a steep part, a flat part, a steep part, and so on. And that will give us a couple of uh, mesas and plateaus to work with. And so we could now go to transform puppy ray. There you go. And so we can go through that monument valley or whatever you want to call it <coughs> and uh, explore some of that. Perhaps enable the global illumination. And uh, let's see what else could we do here. Let's keep the uh, blue skies. Um, let's see, fog distance kind of a foggy and reduce the intensity of the light source but also move the position of the light so that would be um, I'm not sure which one it is this one here move the light there you go so with that you can see which way the shadow is going also and let's go render that at uh, let's do high quality not the highest <coughs> not the final render quite yet but just good enough to see it and enjoy. All right, so <coughs> this is a um, quick look at some of the uh, latest developments in uh, PD Pro Howler <coughs> coming up version 9, probably in about a month, month and a half, somewhere in September. And uh, I encourage you to uh, get busy with version 8. If you don't have version 8 yet, uh, it's a good time to get in and uh, become familiar with what's already there. Uh, let's have one look at one more, uh, one more look at the new feature. And this time I'll start from scratch, uh, a slightly smaller, let's say 640 by 40, 640 square, and I'll make it an animation of uh, 200 frames. 
<coughs> there we go. So those 200 frames, what I want to do now is animate sort of particles that are orbiting each other. And so there's a new animated filter that's still under development. We call it the neutrons. And in the neutrons, what you'll see is that, well, they are orbiting and attracting each other. And there's all sorts of things you can do on the rendering side with them. First of all, change the particle size, uh, change uh, the, the count, how many of them there are. Um, let's say we want to also have a little bit of a sort of a fixed size, uh, have them all the same size or have a variety, some of them really small. Depth Q, add a little bit more depth to that because they really orbit not just left and right and up and down but also towards you in 3D. And uh, <coughs> there's a, some gradient colors you can apply as well. So they'll go through different colors depending on the gradients. Let's do without the... Uh, the depth cube perhaps to see that better for the dark red. There's trails also, you can have them leave sort of uh, little trails, trail space. Uh, you can see that right there. And then there's also Nova render and uh, uh, lens flares. Now those you don't see in the preview. Uh, it's quite time consuming to do that, but it'll be <coughs> quite fabulous then. So what I'll do is I'll enable the Nova render and let's see what else we have. Spin up time in frames. Oh, I guess that's <coughs> some sort of how many frames we want to use for initial spin-up. <coughs> uh, I'll have to read up on that a little bit more. Uh, but uh, there's also some minimum and maximum mass you can indicate, so that will control the size of the larger ones. And they'll still go to the smaller size, uh, depending on overall here how much you control that. So let's say we do this and then go. Let's go render that. So what's going to happen now is just rendering this across the entire animation sequence. And there we go. Now I think we have 200 frames <coughs> almost done here. And there we go. So now we can go scrub through that. And this is a nice little animation that you could use for a variety of reasons. I mean, you know, maybe you need just a little intro or transition of some sort. Uh, maybe you're doing a sci-fi clip and you need something funky to appear on a computer screen somewhere. Uh, or it's just something you could actually paint with. You could pick that up as a custom brush now too. So let's see for instance, uh, first of all, let's make it uh, looping so that we don't see the end and the beginning uh, as a different stage. And so that would be simply a right click on your timeline here and select make loopable. Or you could do that from the animation menu right there and on the frames and make it loopable right there and indicate basically how many frames you want to dedicate or to sacrifice at the end of the animation to make them fade over the same number of frames at the beginning. So we have a total of zero to, I mean, uh, 200 frames and we'll go down to about this much. All right, so um, we are done with this little thing. So now as we play it, it's simply going to play endlessly and looping. And then of course we could turn that into an animated brush in a couple of ways. Uh, we could pick it up just as is, um, maybe zoom out a little bit, where is it there, um, and say we want to use the custom brush pickup tool and pick it up like so. But before you let go, hit, uh, hit the Alt key and then let go while the Alt key is down so that it's going through the entire image sequence, grabbing those images and putting that into the custom brush. So it's an animated custom brush or also known as an anim brush. And um, you could, for instance, paint with that in additive mode so that the black parts, and you can see it, by the way, here now, it's, it's tra uh, you know, tracking the, the cursor. Uh, things I could do now here is uh, paint with that over. So first thing I'll do is I'll, I'll store it, store and manage this as a copy of it. And um, maybe we'll want to, to paint with it, but not just over the current image, in fact, um, we'll go and paint in, in a mode which is uh, additive, additive mode, so that will make it brighter faster. And then we'll also uh, perhaps change the hue. Let's go and change the hue right there and go to something like greenish or bluish. Just a different hue so that it adds up to even yet other colors as we go and uh, paint it over existing reddish tint, right? So when we have green, there you go and paint that on top. Uh, oh, hold on, it's still 
reapplying the color. There you go. So now I got blue. So now I'm going to uh, to have to uh, change set the mode again because that got reset when I changed it over here. So I'm going to go to additive now, and so now it's in additive mode where it's adding the blue. And I'll make it a little bit faster, uh, reducing the step distance here to just about uh, one or two so that it's going much faster through that animation. There you go. See that? And uh, now the top of it is to uh, maybe make it a little bit smaller, resample it down um, like so. And again, um, this one here that I'm resampling doesn't use the additive mode. So if I'm working with this, it's inheriting the entire set, including the mode. I need to reset it to uh, additive at this point. Then if I want to stick with that, I can store that. And then now I have a second brush. And that one is in additive mode. Right. So now, or not. Look at that. All right. So anyway, um, we can go and paint with that. And we can paint with that over the existing image or the existing animation. And we simply use the Alt key to do that. With the Alt key, you actually cycle through the current animation while you're painting with the new animation. All right, and so that keeps just the rendering into the entire image sequence. And you can combine that with, uh, let's say, still having also the mirror mode. Let's do, for instance, uh, vertical mirror. There you go. And so as we do that, he'll hit the Alt key and paint. And there you go. All right, so uh, just another look at some of the crazy stuff that we're getting ready to do with uh, version 9. Coming up, uh, like I said, sometimes in September. All right, thanks for watching and have fun using uh, PD Pro 8 uh, in the meantime or earlier versions. But like I said, it's uh, not a bad idea to consider upgrading now because that'll get you even better discounts later on. All right, bye-bye.